Welcome back, compadres. I'm Brandon Tolbert, and today we're talking natural gas engineering. The Klein Curve Analysis. It's one of the most important, fundamental, and building blocks of petroleum engineering. You can use the Klein Curve Analysis to forecast reserves, predict DURs, and even determine original gas in place. Today we're going to start with the most fundamental aspect of the Klein Curve Analysis, the rate time interpretation. Although it's not widely used today, if you understand the fundamentals of this, you are well equipped to understand the more complicated interpretations. So guys, let's get started. Welcome guys, today we're going to determine the reserves and estimated ultimate recovery of a well using rate time decline curve analysis. So rate time decline curve is represented by this graph right here. You have your production rate on the y-axis and you have your production time on the x-axis and so these dots right here blue dots blue circled dots represents the gas production rate at a given time and you can see it declines over time and so we fit a curve to this data and then we forecast it with the red line to determine reserves and EUR so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna actually take gas production data and do this and so the key concepts I want you to think about as we do this is the ARPS rate decline equation. This is the most fundamental equation of decline curve analysis and a lot of other more complicated interpretations built off of this. So kind of understand this. Also minimizing the sum of squared errors. So in order to fit our curve, we're going to have to apply the minimization of the sum of squared errors to uh, forecast. And then you need to know what reserves are which is basically what is left to produce from a well it considers the economic limit or the economic rate and also estimated ultimate recovery is how much gas you produce over the life of a well so before we get started let's kind of look at the theory and don't get caught up in the equation so much it's not that important what is important is the logic you go through so this is the ARPS equation. This is the main equation right here. And so you have the initial producing rate, the initial decline, and then the time, and then you have a B exponent. A B exponent is basically a decline constant. The larger it is, the longer your well produces. The smaller it is, well, you're, you don't produce, your well doesn't produce as long and you get smaller EURs. But this is the fundamental equation. And so ARPS equation covers basically three different types of well behavior. You have exponential flow, harmonic flow, and hyperbolic flow. And so that's not too important, but just remember that. What you have here is for B values greater than zero, you can apply this equation. So this is the equation you're gonna use. For B values equal to zero, you can reduce this equation right here to this equation using calculus. But it's derived, this equation is derived from here. And so you have two equations you can apply to determine rate. That's it. No more. And so now, another thing you want to do to forecast reserves is to calculate the cumulative gas production. So that's simply just the integral of the rate, right? Or flow rate times time equals cumulative gas produced so it's the area under this curve and so what you get here is you get this equation right here and so once again when you only need two equations this one right here for when B values don't equal one and then this equation right here can be derived from calculus 2 from the above equation when B equals one this is highly unlikely to happen, but we're actually going to code this in Excel VBA using these two equations to determine rate and these two equations to determine cumulative gas production. But we're more than likely never going to encounter this case. But I'm going to include it anyways. And then the nominal decline is the instantaneous decline at a specific point in time. So you're going to need this because if you look at this graph over here, the way we forecast reserves is we basically apply the minimi minimization of the sum of squared errors of the ARPS equation right here, these two equations right here. We get our best fit line through the production data. 
and then we stop okay so now that we have our last point in time we know how much gas we produced up to this point in time we can calculate that in Excel now we need to forecast so now we forecast to the economic limit which is going to be determined by your economic analysis and then you determine the reserves by taking the integral under this curve which is simply this equation so you basically take the rate at this point QI right here and then your rate at the last point the economic limit and then you'd have your B value that you determine from your best fit line and then your instantaneous decline would be your instantaneous decline at this point and then you can determine your cumulative gas produced which is your reserves so that's how we do it um, it's not that complicated but just keep that in mind you're fitting this data right here and then you're using your equation to forecast from the last data point and beyond so that's really what it is so these are the steps you need to go through to fit your decline curve and forecast your well or determine your EUR and reserves and I'm not gonna go through this if you're interested pause the video read through this it's pretty self-explanatory so I'm gonna move on so now I had to talk I talked about earlier or introduced this concept is in that we don't really apply this rate time decline curve analysis anymore why well these are the reasons because a lot of times these days we have the wells have flow regime changes what does this mean this means like your well can go from producing uh, linear flow to boundary dominated flow uh, th there's just different flow regimes and I'm not going to get into too much detail but basically if you fit your rate time decline curve t to a well that's exhibits flow regime changes you're going to overestimate your reserves another reason we don't like to use rate time decline curves is because it's affected by shut-ins so if I shut in the well over a period of time and then I turn on the well full choke down the line <laughs> well my entire fit is going to be screwed up I'm going to overestimate reserves so that's really the reason we don't want to use this rate time interpretation because it overestimates reserves because it neglects flow regime changes and shut-ins and so but I'm going to demonstrate it anyways because you're going to use these same concepts for radio flow interpretations and linear flow interpretations. So let's go ahead and step over to Excel and get started. Okay guys, so let's start this. So what I've done is I pulled in production data from a gas well. And so what I pulled in is the cumulative gas produced, the time at which the time, and also the rate at that given time. So these are the three pieces of information I need to do rate time decline. So what I want to do, so you can see this production data it's plotted on this graph this is a rate time graph this is what it looks like we start off with a high rate and see it slowly decline over time so the objective is to fit this early production data with our ARPS equation and then forecast from our last point and beyond to determine EUR and reserves and so before we get started let's go look into the code what you have here is the equations we used in the slides basically slide two this is our ARPS rate Let's see so what you have here is you have the logic to determine ARPS rate so if B equal to Z if B is equal to zero then you have exponential decline else you have hyperbolic and harmonic decline which can just be described with one equation so these are the two equations in the slide that's all you need okay and you can see that our con our variables we need are initial rate, initial decline rate, the B value, and also time. And so this is our exponential rate equation that I called up here. The next thing we want to do is to determine cumulative gas produced. So these are the other two equations in the slides. So if B equals the one, you have one equation. If B is not equal to one, then you have another equation. So the last equation we need is nominal decline because we want to forecast reserves at our last data point using our fit. So this is what you need. So this is that equation in the slide. DI is initial decline rate. B is the decline exponent. T is time. And so this is it. So these are the only equations you need 
to do re rate time analysis. Not too much, right? I like it easy and simple, man. I'll take it any day of the week. And so the first thing we want to do is determine our ARPS rate and plot it on this graph. So let's use our ARPS rate equation. And so what you have here, it takes in QI, which I've put up here. You're going to need QI, DI, and B to determine ARPS rate. That's sort of the inputs of the ARP equation. You're going to need these. And I'm going to make these absolute or freeze them. And then the time. So our time is zero initially. Bang. So I'm going to copy that all the way down our production data. And I made a mistake. This should not be frozen. Bang. Copy it all the way down. Okay, so now I've plotted this on the graph already. Okay, so this is our ARPS decline equation right here plotted on this plot. So the next thing we want to do is calculate the difference. So I, m I mentioned earlier to use the minimization, minimization of squared errors. Goodness. But I'm actually going to do something easier. I'm going to do the absolute relative error. Okay, it's pretty much the same thing. It's a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is take the absolute value of our actual rate minus our predicted rate divided by our actual rate. Okay, bang. And I'm going to carry that all the way through our data. And so that goes all the way down here to our last data point. And so I sum these right here because we're going to need to do regression or apply an optimization algorithm to get our data fit close to the data. And so I've summed the errors. The next step is we want to put our forecast on here. Okay. And so what you do to do that is I've sh you take your last data point. Okay which is going to be the maximum of the rate column. So it's going to take our last data point at this point. Okay. Or it's actually the maximum of our time column. My bad. So it's going to take the last point in time. And then I just went ahead and just forecast a few days ahead in time so I could show the forecast on this graph. And so we're going to have to calculate our rate. Okay. ARPS rate, and so that's going to take into account QI, DI, B, and time. I'm going to freeze these right there. Whoops, and carry this down. So now we have shown our forecast on the plot. And so what we're trying to do, guys, if you recall in the slides, what I was trying to point out is in order to forecast, we need our last point in time right here, our rate at this point in time using our ARPS equation, and also the nominal decline at this point. And then we need our rate at the economic limit. So we need four pieces of information. The rate at the economic limit, our instantaneous decline at the last production point in time and also the time and also the rate <laughs> so guys that's what we're doing here so we just re need the instantaneous rate at our last point right here so it's going to take di b and time Okay, so that's really all we need. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put in our reserves equation, which is just going to be our cumulative production from this point and beyond. So this is why we calculated all this, right? So we need this point and beyond. Okay, so what we take into this is QI at this point right here. So that would be our last data point. So bang. And then DI at our last point right here. So right there. And then B and then our economic rate. 
economic limit rate. So bang, there we have it, okay? And then our EUR is simply the sum of these two numbers. And the reason this is negative right here is because our forecast isn't right, okay? <laughs> so basically I've chosen a point in this region right here on this, this curve, but once we get closer, you'll see that change. Next we wanna do, next thing we wanna do is we wanna minimize the sum of errors with Solver. If you haven't used Solver before, you need to learn how to use it because it's very useful for engineers. But before I minimize this with Solver, I wanna at least get this a close fit, you know, just in the ballpark. Solver will uh, give you a better result if you get a close fit initially. So let's do that, let's get a little closer. So let's go change the parameters right here that we're gonna optimize off of. So our initial rate, let's change that to around 400. Okay, so now our decline is a little bit too steep, so I'm gonna reduce the decline a little bit, change that to 0.04. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, and so this was, we can mess around with this, say 0.6. Uh, that's a little high. Let's change it to 0.5. That looks like a pretty darn good fit. So you can see here our reserves have updated to positive values because our forecast here, 30 right here, falls over here instead of on our curve right here. And so it falls on the forecast curve. And so let's change this or let's go ahead and forecast so let's minimize this with solver to get a better solution so what I'm going to do is I'm going to this is my objective I want to change these values to minimize the objective so if we solve this and we get a sum of errors of 97 percent which is better than what we did by hand and you can see the curve right here that is a nice clean fit you know somebody could look at this and say yeah I agree with that that's a great fit and so what we've done here is we have our fit so now we have our reserves right there in our EUR so now if our economic limit changes say we want say our economic limit is gonna be 50 M CF per day so our reserve should decrease, and they do, bang. So we only have 200,000 MSCF to produce left. What if it's 15, it should increase, and yes, it does. So you can see this as right here. So guys, that's it. We were able to forecast production data using rate time interpretation using Excel VBA and the ARPS equations. So that's it. and. If you like the video, please subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Adios.